I am here in Medjugorje and I'm with, what's your name? Brendan Shanahan. Brendan, where are you from? I'm from a place called Turles County Prairie. And you said you came over 50 times here? Uh, yeah, over the years, yeah. I came originally back in 1999. And why did you come at the time? What did you think when you heard the story? Um, long story, I suppose. I came back in 1999 um, as after coming out of rehab. And my mum was part of a prayer group at the time. Yeah. And she, uh, her group was coming out to Medjugorje at the time. And she said, well, I'm not going, but sure you can go. And like I spent 12 weeks locked up in a house in rehab. <laughs> so uh, a break away would have done me good. And that's what I came to Medjugorje for originally. And uh, I came to Medjugorje not knowing anything about Medjugorje, not having any experience of religious faith as such in my life at that, at that time, even though I grew up as a Catholic and I was supposedly going to Mass and supposedly doing Catholic things, but not really doing it because I was a teenager and rebellious teenager at the time. So uh, I came to Medjugorje not knowing anything about Medjugorje or not knowing any fruits of Medjugorje. And I came to Medjugorje back in 99 for a holiday, more so than anything else. And when I came to Medjugorje, I came with, I suppose, I came because I needed a break. Uh, naturally enough, I spent 12 weeks under the microscope of being, looking at myself and looking at my addictions and looking at my problems in another case in a way. But I came also then just for a break because it was sunshine and it was, I didn't know anybody and it was grand. But we met a couple of people at my own age group at the time. And not to be out of sorts, I suppose, I picked up the rosary beads. So in case one trick of an alcoholic is always to blend in. And I was one to blend in because I didn't want to be seen because I was always very secretive of what I did and what I didn't do. It's my nature. So my nature was to pick up the rosary beads and blend in. So we went up Blue Cross Mountain. I blended in. Went up Pabador, blended in. But one day we went up to Cross Mountain and we came back down it and I said, I have to do this again for some reason. And I went up doing the stations across step by step. And it's like each scene of the, the stations across kind of spoke to me you know, of all the different scenes in my own life and, and my pain was being poured out on that mountain and when I got to the top of the mountain I put my hand on the big cross and it's like I said to the Lord God where where were you during all my suffering where were you when I did this to myself and did this to my family and did this to everyone that I loved so dearly and he, it's like an inner being inner quietness said to me like I've always been with you. I've never left you. You're just because you didn't see me doesn't mean I know I haven't suffered or been with you. So that was kind of the beginning of my healing. So then I picked up the rosary beads for real and I started saying the rosary. But I suppose another special trick of that week, privilege of that week, was when Mariana was having her visionary and she's going back to her own house back at the mountains come back years and years ago she's in a tiny tiny little chapel and don't ask me how I got into the chapel because I was a courts and a nobody but I was into the back of the chapel and I was very privileged to be there and I remember Mariana saying like our lady has wrapped us all in her mantle but she's going to anoint someone very special with the gifts of the Holy Spirit now I was delighted to be there while I was walking down back down the hill down to here down to the village and I was saying to lads, I wonder what the Holy Spirit is about. Because I knew nothing about the Holy Spirit. Knew nothing. So, yeah, that was great anyway. And, you know, the Holy Spirit is a great, great, at that time, meant nothing to me. But when I went home, my, I spoke to my mum about it and she said, no, I go up to the Palatine community there and talk to Father John and he'll talk to you. 
and he said to me, well, you had a great experience and delighted for you and it's lovely. And he says, would you like to develop where you are? And I said, yeah, I suppose, yeah. And then I said to him, do you know anything about this Holy Spirit fella? And uh, he says, uh, truly enough, I do. So he started doing a thing called Life in the Spirit seminars with me on a one-to-one basis for, uh, for um, a couple of weeks. But even my lack of faith and my lack of understanding was like even when there's a thing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit on a fifth week and when that came into play um, I just ran I wasn't able to go through it I went, actually went to the pub believe it or not I was sitting down in the pub and the father came in behind me and says he didn't turn up he says no I didn't and there's no more said about it so he said he said I only had a pint beside me and he says uh so we might try again next week and we did and uh, the following week I was baptised in the spirit and it didn't make much of a change to me but you know, I'm a painter by trade and a couple of weeks later you know, I was painting the door and I suddenly got this warmth rush over me this feeling of elation and I said what's going on here like just a, a slow burner you know it was a slow burner and I was filled with the Holy Spirit and ever since then I have done you know amazing things I've done theology I've done hospital chaplaincy I've, I've recently done a, a, a diocesan pastoral ministry course um, I've done you know so many different things over the past number of years you know, I have been part of deliverance team, exorcism teams, I've been part of, you know, inner healing ministry teams, we have our own inner ministry healing, we opened a retreat house in Ireland at one stage, but COVID closed that down. All these different things, all because of this place here, Mejigori. Wow, unbelievable. Now you can do a promotion, why are you about our Catholic faith? What is so beautiful about our Catholic faith? Our Catholic faith is about love. Love one another. God is love. God, no matter what you come, warts and all, doesn't matter. As Jesus always says, he left the shepherd left the 99 behind to find the one. The one, all we need to do is find the one. And that one is the one that the Lord will love. I am that one. That the Lord, that's no people. People have no, have to experience the love, and the people don't experience love unless they experience the love of God. Because you can have the love of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You can experience all that, but it's not. It's gratification. It's not love. You can have love of a wife. You can have love of a parents. You can have all that love. But less you experience Christ's love, and that doesn't happen unless you have someone to share it with you. So beautiful how you say, because you, you know it too. A lot of people think that God the Father is an angry old man with a white beard <laughs> who is happy when we make a mistake and he can put us to hell. Yeah. There's a deacon from Austria. He said it's a diabolical image of God the Father. Yeah. You experience him. Describe the beauty of God the yeah. Father. Yeah. Christ is love. Christ, Christ is non-judgmental. He doesn't care what you've done or what you haven't done. He doesn't care whether you are a sinner or whether you're the biggest murderer in the world. If you want to want to know the Lord, all you have to do is have that want in your heart, and He'll do the rest. So allow the love allow that want I wouldn't say even not knowing how not knowing where not knowing the ability of how to know the Lord you don't need to know you just need to have that want in your heart and let Jesus meet you where that want is because he will find you because he is searching for the one out of that 99 and you are that person that he's looking for and he will find you if you have that want in your heart yes, that's for one listening right now several people listen careful we vis visit the video listen to it again and because you were the one alone going up cross mountain the stations of the cross yeah. and he caught your heart he captured you know he captured me and he hooked me hook line and sinker 
he reeled me in and like I lived in the world I lived in Satan's world I lived a life I lived a life of debauchery where where materialism was so great that I bought everything around me and I had everything around me I didn't want for anything I had every materialism that ever was known that anyone could ever want to possess I had but yes what did I have nothing and it's only when the whole lot collapsed around me that I went into um, Asheries, the place in Ireland for uh, drinking drugs and re 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 uh, um, rehabilitation it's only when I went in there that and I came to Medjugorje out of that that it was only when I was most vulnerable and most the rug was pulled out from underneath me so I had nothing else to stand on because I was so busy standing on humanistic living that when I was standing on humanistic living I had nothing but when I came here to Medjugorje and again I was trying to be a pretense but, I, but the pretense didn't last because God filtered through the pretense and on Cross Mountain he found the real me and here I am today nearly 1999 to today what I don't know how many years that is 30 odd years and I keep coming back to Medjugorje why do you come back all the time? Um, I suppose it's the beginning it is something very special about Medjugorje because I've been to Lourdes I've been to Fatima I've been to you know Knock in Ireland or I guess maybe as many of the religious places but I suppose Medjugorje has something very special where it is you know this adoration and confession the two main heals you have healing through you sit in the sun you get a suntan you sit in front of the blessed sacrament you're bound to pick up something whether that's something whether it inside you doesn't like this adoration you have confession to get rid of that it so you know it's a, a snowball effect where the two of them marry together and where the two of them allow you to be closer to Jesus and closer to the Lord and it's all you know it's all kind of it works so well together where every pilgrimage site has its own uniqueness uh, Medjugorje is very unique I feel to people that are broken explain explain <laughs> um, again people come to Medjugorje searching as I come to Medjugorje every time I come to Medjugorje I've been here so many times I can't even count but every time I come to Medjugorje I'm searching for something deeper deeper to the meaning of which the Lord has brought me to deeper to the meaning of you know I desire to be I desire greatly to be in the presence of Jesus whether it is on this this world or the next world I've seen hell I don't want to go to hell I know I've experienced hell I experienced the devil flipping me around that I don't want anymore and the answer is very simple the answer is here in Medjugorje the answer is that want to want to know the Lord and he will bring you slowly but surely through that journey whether that journey takes you a week or whether that journey takes you 50 years but long as you have and remain to have that want that want in your heart to love and to hold and to be part of Christ and just allow him to be your mentor not some guru or not not Brendan not anyone else but I'll allow and be guided by the Blessed Sacrament sit in front of the Blessed Sacrament sit in front of your, your, the priests and confess how you feel talk to the Lord how you feel and how you are and simply be be yourself in front of Jesus because there's a saying that like the Lord knows you as true as an open page in a book you just have to let the Lord see who you are and that can be very difficult because of your sinfulness and your brokenness and your lies and your deceit and everything else that you've done 
but like the Lord loves leopards the Lord loves sinners the Lord loves those who are filthy so how dirty you may feel or how may dirty you may think you are he's seen it all before and it doesn't matter to him he doesn't care you know he doesn't give a continental whether you're a sinner or whether you're a rapist or whether you're a murderer or whether you've done some awful things in your life whether you've committed abortion or whether you're apart from an abortion or the case may be you committed murder it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you cast mass genocide at the end of the day the Lord loves you for who you are because you are one of his 99 ah, man that's so important what you said did you make the experience that you dropped into that drugs into that alcohol because maybe you hated yourself that you didn't receive proper love self-love at the beginning that you wanted to fill a void inside of you yeah it was uh, like uh, from my earliest years for no reason at all because i grew up in a good family and my family were were always good to me and nourishing and nurturing and everything else and like my mum was such a devout woman it was unreal like, because even my mum like a wrestler she died in april this year like she consecrated me to our lady in in in, in uh, lourdes because she had so many miscarriages that she was afraid that even I was going to be miscarried. So she consecrated me, my life, my journey to her, to Our Lady and Lords. So my, my family were a devout family. It's just that I went off my rail. I decided to do what I wanted to do and I went my way and it made no difference to what everyone else was going to tell me because I was so, I suppose, self-righteous and self-centered and so focused on myself that what you said or what anyone else said didn't make any difference to me because it was me and only me and it wasn't anyone else <laughs> so what mum dad said what god said what my parish priest said what my teacher said it was basically uh, a finger up to everybody and that's the way i was and that's the way you know i was very much rebellious and that rebellion only got me well, I say, I'm going to say it was a bad thing, but now it's a good thing. Yeah. Because uh, here I am today, talking about how great and how brilliant the love of the Lord is. And no matter how your crosses are and how your crosses feel and how you feel about anything, the love of the Lord will actually bring you to where you need to be. Whether you're sick or whether you're you know whether you're broken or whether wounded or you know addiction one of the things I see people in addiction like addiction is addiction is a wound and it's a wound that we fill with sex drugs or rock and roll allow Jesus to fill that wound and allow Jesus to heal that wound allow Jesus to take the shards of dirt out of that wound so that wounds can become whole so that wounds can become united to one body and that body is reattached to the vine and the vine is part of you know the ultimate vine but all these woundedness and all these brokenness and all these things that we experience I see we're talking too much now but <laughs> no this is fantastic I'm listening in awe yeah but I just uh, you know it's you know the woundedness that we experience in our life whether you're an alcoholic or a non-alcoholic whether it's verbal abuse or physical abuse or mental abuse it all is a scar and all these scars that we have all leave within it a certain dirt and that dirt kind of stops the wound from being healed but if we bring that pain and that issue to the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament or bring it to him in confession or bring it to him where we can it, it brings about healing and it brings about wholeness to you once more because we are we can't we can you can go to a psychiatrist and you can go to a, a, a shrink to and pay loads and loads of money for for analysis and understanding and medication but like at the end of the day there's only one thing that can be done about it and that can be healed but there's only one person that can do that healing is jesus jesus and even our blood mother who will intercede for you because she loves you so much that she offered her son up on the cross for her 
So like everything is here within this encapsulation, this building of this premises of this, this Medjugorje, of any religious site, it doesn't even have to be Medjugorje. But like we're just missing the tenderness and the compassion. Let the tenderness and compassion of each other boast of the Lord. Like I'm boasting of Christ here now. I'm not boasting of what I do or what I don't do. I'm bo simply boasting of what Jesus has done in my life. And Jesus does for anyone else that. Because I will talk today as I'm talking to you. And I will boast of the Lord and we will pray at the end of the day for God's grace and God's blessing. But love of Jesus, love of neighbor, love one another, love and not knowing how to love is fine, just allow that want to want to know the Lord, that want of not, like, if you don't know how to pray, it doesn't matter, if you know how to say the rosary, it doesn't matter. If you don't know how to bend in mass, it doesn't matter. But if you have that want in your heart, Jesus, some way or somehow, will fill that want. And that's a want, you know. How do you express? How do you? How do you explain a want? Like a want is. It's a deep desire from the heart. It's a desire. Authentic desire uh, yeah, from yeah, the heart. Yeah. But even uh, if you don't have that full, because. We can get stuck in, in, do we understand what that desire even is? Because we don't, because of our brokenness, we don't even know what desire is. And because of our brokenness, we don't understand where that's leading us or where it should bring us. But that want to want to know the Lord is that your desire doesn't know how, your will doesn't know how, your being doesn't know how, but yet you have somehow in your conscious mind you want, like, shit, what I'm living isn't worth living. And I need to change it. And Christ, you're the only person that I know, I even I don't know, because I've kind of had a taste of what's going on, and I see that it's possible. And that possibility can change your life. From sleeping in a bed, pissing on yourself, to being part of religious group and being part of someone who brings that want and journey with people for that want. So beautiful what you say. And you know in Medjugorje confession is a very central point. It's called the confessional of the world. Yes. What part on your journey confession played out? Oh, confession. Confession gives you the opportunity to, to wipe the slate clean. And we don't understand the fullness of confession because confession, you know, unknowns to ourselves through the goodness and the graciousness of God and the graciousness of Jesus, that confession, the slate is wiped clean. But like, I don't think it's, I think it's beyond our mental capacity to understand that the, the grace and the blessings that's attached to confession because having your slate wiped clean you know I think a humanistic side of it is that we hang on to that sin because we feel that you know we, how could I commit murder for argument's sake and just go into confession and say Jesus you forgive me and he forgives you but if you have the right repentant heart if you have that attitude where you do not want to to commit that sin again where you have that attitude where you are truly remorseful because maybe you now understand what that remorsefulness is and you understand where you were supposed to be and when you committed the sin you didn't understand that it's not my fault like I, everyone was taking a pen I'll take a pen you know everybody's uh, stealing money out of, out of the till, I'll steal money out of the till. But it doesn't make it any right. But like your understanding changes as when you go to confession, that's, that's wiped away and you allow your the faith to, to, to be healed and to be cleaned of that. And as you understand that greater, you understand 
the love and then you understand greater the being and you understand where we're going with this and you understand you know and you accept you accept that Jesus Christ has on the cross has won that victory and you are freed from he, your sin when the priest who is an apostle of Christ blesses you and says you are absolved you of your sin you are free and you are free indeed you're not bound by that sin it's you yourself that catches you yes. it's you yourself that holds you down it's you yourself that in in bodies in impales you with that sin if maybe you could, keep going you keep going sin you know that you i kept going over years the same sin yeah but never give up no. sometimes you're bound you don't even know yeah. why you're bound yeah you're bound you're bound and one of the biggest things is in our life today is uh, you know the selfies everyone takes pictures of self it's all about self they all live in their self they all live in where they are and look at me how pretty am i how gorgeous am i look at my perfect world and 90 percent of the time it's lies because they want to portray this thing but the, if you go to the sacrament of reconciliation you're looking deeper you're looking in the words looking at where you were you're looking at how broken you are you're how wounded you are and you're saying to jesus christ you're saying lord jesus i have sinned i'm sorry language fucked up yeah. but like I'm, i'm sorry for what i've done i'm sorry for the sins i committed and that understanding even in the beginning you won't understand what you're saying eventually it'll become to you that yes you are truly freed from what's the bondage of that sin and the more you allow that bondage to be removed this the metal the dirt which is within you has no authority to remain and and as you reclaim yourself and allow that authority to be removed the cleaner you become and the cleaner you become the more holy you become the more holy you become the more happier you become the more happier things in your life start becoming the more straighter and you know over the years this was the process that i went through me too day and by I'm day going to still through. day by day week by week month by month you know and every time we come to mejigori or any time we go to confession or any time we go to religious service mass confession adoration prayer group no matter where we go it's the same process the lord where two or three are gathered in my name the lord is with us there is also holy spirit look on the left yeah. <laughs> the dove of say, peace. say hello the dove uh, of peace also uh, there yeah. and then we say when we are in a state of grace our faith states that we can go to holy mass and we can see the eucharist it seems mm -hmm. that people don't understand what the eucharist is can you explain what the eucharist is oh i've had a, an experience with the eucharist many many years ago i experienced substantiation big word substantiation where i got the blood and wine under two species and um uh, i didn't know what was going on because to me uh, it was early back in you know it could have been early 2000s where things were very new to me it's actually a charismatic conference in 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 uh in, Do in where was i um minute and i was at a charismatic conference and i experienced substantiation big word substantiation what it means the body and blood of jesus christ becomes becomes body and blood and i took the body and blood i took actually the host the, the wine host, the who host. becomes i took the blood I took, i took the bread and the bread turned to flesh put in my mouth and i turned to my friend next to me who can validate what i'm saying and i said what is in my mouth it feels like there's a lump of flesh in my mouth and i turned and they saw a flump of flesh in my mouth they <laughs> it was <laughs> just <laughs> wow you know and you know it was what's this yeah it was you know it was it was you know it, I, it was a gift for me that's the only way i'll say it now it was a gift for me to from the lord simply say it's not for some i suppose it's a personal gift it's a gift for me to say like yes i am real and that's just one of the many gifts that the lord gave me over the years to say yes i am real and i am true and this goes back 
donkeys years ago, I suppose that's one of the first experiences I ever experienced. And that was one of them where, you know, I experienced substantiation where the, the body and blood of Jesus Christ became real. And I suppose it, it's instilled in me that Christ is real. He is real. And I experienced that as a personal revelation to me. And it's a personal thing to me. And it is true that Christ is real. And not everybody, like, so many people don't experience anything. And I suppose I'm ruined to a certain degree that I have so many experiences and I have so many, um, like, I could go on for hours the amount of things that I've seen. It's fascinating to listen seen to. Seen and done, but like, like, the Lord has, has blessed me and he has shown me that he is real. And he has so me so many different things over the years and our lady's been so brilliant to us and so gracious to us even to my family like she's been so unbelievable like what the, the, the things she's done for us over the years like the healings and everything else like I have twins twins were born very premature and one of my little girls had a very stomach problem and you know we brought her to Eddie Stones and Eddie Stones prayed with her and Eddie Stones says to her you know our lady loves you for some reason and our lady has healed her like everybody knows Eddie Stone and then what Eddie Stone says it's fairly accurate but like our lady admitted had her hand on my daughters even her, their conception the whole lot like our lady had so, so our lady is very much part and parcel of her life and very thankful to her as a as a good mother and I had had a good mother my own mother died in April and we all pray for her and she was a very very good mother and I she, can see that it's reflecting in you and she she loved us all she was very good love she was like as I say in the beginning before I was even conceived I was just in by side in her womb I was offered to Our Lady it's amazing and look what you're doing now you're oh. proclaiming the good news oh, of her son yeah yeah oh, if I may ask you pray the rosary yes can you explain Pater Pio said it's the weapon of our times we are in tough times mm. why is the weapon <laughs> of these times our the rosary you know the rosary brings us even if we don't meditate on the rosary, even if we recite the rosary out of rose, where we go through the motions of it, you know, we're still prote protecting ourselves. And another thing is the armor of Christ, where I place the armor of Christ. I even have my children know it. I place upon my head the helmet of salvation against all thoughts, which is not of you. I place upon my chest the breastplate of righteousness, so I may find righteousness deep in my heart and in my soul. Place upon my waist the cord of truth, so I may be truthful as the fire I have my being. Place upon my feet the sandals of the gospel of the good news, so I may go forth to proclaim the gospel for all to hear. I place in my left hand the word of God, so I may know God's word, and God's word may act as a shield against the flaming arrows of the evil one. I place in my right hand the sword of the spirit, that the sword of the spirit may act as a tool, free people from the enslavement and the tyranny of that of the evil one. So, Father, I am shod, I am ready to do battle in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. But the rosary, you know, an armor, it is an armor. Because Satan hates Our Lady. Our Lady stood in the head of, of the Satan. He, she crushed the serpent. So the rosary, even to hold your rosary beads, even if you don't say your rosary, to trust, even if you can't say the rosary, if you're too tired to say it, you're too fatigued or too worn out, even if you just hold your rosary in your rosary hand, and simply say, Mary, I trust in you. I'm too tired, I'm too worn out, I'm too fatigued, I'm too drunk, I'm too fed up, I'm too mentally worn out from this. But yes, Mary, I'm holding your rosary bees. I don't know how to say the rosary, I don't want to say the rosary, but I trust in you. And again, that trust, that want, that desire, is back to the 99. The Lord will seek out the one that is lost, more so than the 99. Because the 99 are in the folds, they're protected. The one that's vulnerable, 
one is loose. That's where the wolf will go. That's where the wolves will attack the isolated one. That's where you'll find the devil trying to rip that person apart even greater. That's the person we should all be searching for. The one that's isolated, the one that's vulnerable, the one that's sitting on the cuffs of society, broken. They're the people that the devil is preying on because they're vulnerable. The, the 99 in the sheepfold are fine. It's the ones that externally that we need to search and bring back into the fold so they can be protected. But we need community, we need strength, we need strength in numbers. We need to be available for each other, we need to be able to talk to each other, we need to be able to share with each other. We need to be able to be open to one another, in truth, and tell people a spade is a spade, a shovel is a shovel, if you're wrong, you're wrong, and accept how you are wrong. And people are afraid to say because of social in discrimination, well, you know, you shouldn't be gay, you shouldn't be married, you shouldn't be living in adultery, you shouldn't be doing all these things. But people, because it's a P&Q, you're not allowed. Or you end up in the WRC and you have a work relations committee down your back. <laughs> you end up in court over nearly at this stage. But like, again, the rosary, the strength of the rosary, the tool of the rosary, it's a tool that we've been given. We've been given many tools by our Lord to succeed in this world. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, virtue, piety, fear of the Lord, all fruits of the Holy Spirit. But all these things are all given to us to send a rosary as a tool to combat that evil. Because the devil hates the rosary. And he hates the Magnificat. So, Because it's a human being out of humility listening. Thy will be done, Our Lady said. I give the fiat. Yeah. If I may ask, you know, what I experience here in Medjugorje, Our Lady wants to teach that we live again as we will Adam lived before the fall. Yeah. He was walking in the divine will with the Holy, with God in the summer evening, warm breathe, they yeah. say so beautifully. Yeah. Did, you, did you make the experience as well, when you live with intention, thy will be done, that you are more in peace and more in joy in your life? Thy will be done. If we allow, if we allow in the, in the world that we live in, and the world that we live in is very much full of noise. And it's very full of distractions. iPhones, iPads, Samsung, everything else, Netflix, uh, gluttony of influx against us, body, mind, spirit, everything around everything. us. Everything, food, is, is eating, eating, every, fast food, whatever. Everything is, is leading us to awareness of self. And everything is a distraction of self. And like I am here myself, on my own, I left my wife and my kids at home because I found myself being so distracted from the world, from work and everything else, that I needed to, even though I, I, I'm very much practicing every day of the week, I still needed to separate myself from the world to come here to pray, to focus myself, recharge the battery. I was here in April, but I still need to come back and recharge the battery and reconnect in a deeper, more simplistic way that I'm not filled and bombarded with the external world, where the external world is trying to take chunks out here. It's constantly chipping at you with a hammer, trying to wear you down. So it's constantly trying to take the, the goodness out of you, trying to take the, the holiness back out of you, trying to break you down to where, you know, all the so many distractions of, you know, all the, when I think of all the selfies and all the, the, the influencers, these influencers, I'm sorry to say, but like, they do nothing for me, only influence nothing. They talk about, and there's so many followers they have and all this type of rubbish. It's mind-boggling how, how the world has gone so secular, but yet people are searching, people are following an influencer, and they're following an influencer because they want to be influenced. Hello lads, you want to be influenced, follow something they can follow for an example, and where it works, and it brings you wholeness, the fullness, and life. Like, you're following these influencers because they have a lovely house or they have a lovely car or they have lovely food or they have lovely, they have a perfect life. But I know influencers and their life isn't so perfect. 
They're shallow. They're hollow. They have nothing to offer you. Only fill your head full of nonsense. Where you come here to Medjugorje and you pray, you sit in front of the presence of the Lord, your head will be full with you and you and your presence with the Lord. It'll be full of fullness, not full of crap, not full of someone else's ideas of how you should live your life. You come here and your life will be filled with how you and your Lord need to manage your life, not how you should live your life with someone else or through someone else's what you see and what else someone else is doing. It doesn't work that way, I'm afraid. It's so beautiful what you say. I made the same experience. You can fill yourself with food, with everything, you know. Mm. Exactly what you say. Wow, wow. You know, I'm just... Because it's very clear what you're saying. That's exactly what it is. And maybe we come to Our Lady says daily Bible reading. That's a summary of what you said. I would call it even a bit like neuro-linguistic reprogramming. That you really fill yourself what is true, your proper identity. Yeah. Is it so? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, unfortunately, daily mass is getting harder and harder to come by. Even in our own parish now, we've lost another priest. And but I've lost mass Monday, Wednesday and Fridays. I've lost mass. The same in Germany. You know, so I'm three masses down a week. But like, so I'm trying to find something else that my hour every day every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday are now there's a void so I'm trying to find some another way of trying to fill that void where before you know, you're such a routine of doing, 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 doing and now it's gone so it's kind of trying to find something to fill in that void but there's different things that are out there like there's um, what's that um, Catholic Daily Reflections. Catholic Daily Reflections give a lovely, it's an app, and it's one of many apps I know of, but this one in particular I use because the Catholic Daily Reflection, it gives you a reflection on the, on the daily readings. And whether you're driving to work or whether you're driving home for work, you can put on your car, I guess maybe, but it gives you food for thought for the day. And your uh, uh, Universalis is another one. But like these are all apps that you can use that are free, majority of the time. And um, uh, you can listen. But if you don't have the physical time, like driving, we all drive. I drive an hour and a half to work. So many people drive an hour and a half to work. So many drive home for an hour to work. But like, it's an opportunity to, to spend time, even though you're driving, to listen and to, and to be. To, there's nothing as good setting yourself up in the morning only in prayer now whether you don't have half an hour or 40 minutes in the morning to go pray a lot of people don't I'm up myself at half five in the morning to go to work um, I leave my house at 10 to 6 so I have I have 15 minutes in the morning to get up and get me breakfast and I say my morning daily prayer of protection before I leave the house and I pray for my house I then when I'm in the van driving in to click the boys for work, I put on the Catholic daily reflection. And it'll give me an idea of how I am for the day. And even if the, during the day you can get to go to Mass, well and good. But then when you're evening time you come back, you have at least you have, you've been meditating on how you have on the world during the day because you're there, you can click back into it. At lunchtime, you can pick out your universalis. You can read your gospel. You can read your daily. You can do the divine office. You can do all these things when you have more time. But like, don't leave your house without putting on your armor of Christ. Don't start your day without asking the intercession of our Lord. Don't leave your house without being close to Jesus first and foremost. Wow. And the last question, you said you are married, you have children. Yes. So many people long for a saintly good marriage. What is your experience? How to have a good marriage, good Catholic marriage? Well, that's too pronged in my case because mm -hmm. I've been married twice. Mm -hmm. My first marriage was an old and because I got married at a young age and I got married for all the wrong reasons. Because when I got married, first of all, it was for 
it was out of lust. Yeah. Well, often a lot of us guys, especially, you know, it, doing that yeah. out of that because yeah. we think we signed a contract. Yeah. It was out of lust and I got married for all the wrong reasons. I had a hole in, I had a hole that she filled and the sex, drugs and rock and roll were part of my life at that time. But that fell apart. That's how I ended up in Nashery. That's how I ended up in Medjugorje, believe it or not. Because that whole marriage had, had dissolved and came apart and it was built on sand, so it turned into quicksand. And I drowned in that quicksand. But a um, number of years later, after coming out of Medjugorje, after finding myself, getting my own self right in the case of the day, I found uh, uh, my wife, Tracy, now. And we have a happy marriage. We're, she's very supportive of what I do and what I don't do. Like, she helps me through all the things I've done over the years. Like, um, we have four beautiful children, twins, young boy and young girl. Every evening, every night before the children go to bed, we do the prayers with them. Every Sunday they go to Mass, they all to serve. They've been out to Medjugorje several times. They're very aware of, of my ministry. They're very aware of how much God and Jesus and Mary and the saints are part of our life. Our house is called St. Jude's. Our house, St. Jude, is the patron saint of hopeless cases. We have a first class relic in our house of St. Jude. Mm -hmm. So, there are um, you now people come and for talks and prayers and other cases be. They are very aware of all this. But like, yeah, without without the proper without love, there's nothing. And the diff there's a very big difference between my first marriage and my second marriage. My first marriage was, as I say, it was love. It was. And I can't, no, I'd say, I'm going to re-correct that now, but first, first marriage was, was marriage out, out of brokenness, my brokenness. And out of that brokenness became marriage and became an awful lot of hatred and bitterness. And an awful lot of, of greater brokenness from the four children that were involved in that marriage. So, I wouldn't say, like, humanity is good at destroying shit. Excuse my French. But my humanity there, there's an awful lot of damage. But to me, my wife at the time, my ex-wife, and my children at the time, where now my attitude, my attitude has changed. My attitude has changed because now I have Jesus in my life and our Blessed Mother, the angels and the saints. And things are very different between now, my wife and my current, I wouldn't say current four children, because I still have four, I'd never get rid of the children, <laughs> or the grandchildren for that matter. <laughs> but like, you know, life is very different, and life is a different person, life is very, um, it has a different take, completely. Where love, and it's not, it's a different. It's not that love. I love my other children any different. I don't. I love all my children. Old, How many younger. in total? I've eight in total. Eight in total. Okay. Yeah. Four with the first wife. Four with the second four wife. Four the first wife. Four and the second wife. Yeah. And I have three grandchildren. Beautiful. And I don't love any of many less or more. And but yet, you know, I I feel feel more for the older ones because of the hardship I put him through and the pain I put him through and the hardship I put him through. I feel more for them than I would the younger ones. And the younger ones, even though I fear for them in a different way, I would feel more I wouldn't say happier for them, but more in peace. In peace with them, yes. In peace with them because I think they have a different dad. It's a different. You're in the divine order now. You're in your cell. Yeah. Maybe yeah, you ask also for the second wife. God, is this my wife, which yes. I should marry? Yes. Did you ask that as well? Yes, of course. Yeah. I had to get. <laughs> I had a spiritual director at the time, and a very good friend who's gone to God now. 
out of John O'Brien. And uh, <laughs> I said to, to my wife, Tracy, I said, Tracy, if the boss doesn't like you, you're not going to get married. <laughs> <laughs> we used to call him the boss. Yeah? Yeah, but... Um, he used to be he used to oh, he guided me he, he taught me he taught me so many different things he died over covid god love him but like he was he taught me everything he taught me so many different things he taught me how to pray he taught me how to pray for with he pray he prayed for me he under, he let help me to understand so many different things that you know you know he was, he was a, not just a, a spiritual father a father but a very, very good friend. Wow, it's so powerful what you said. At the end, what would you tell people? Thank you for all this. These are gifts for all of us. Nuggets, gold nuggets. What would you tell at the end why people should come to Medjugorje one time? Come because you don't know. And come with that want to know. Because we don't know what we need or what we want. But Christ does. And He will give you the graces, and the blessings, and the gifts that you need to succeed in life. So I think coming to Mejigori will give you that grace and those blessings and those gifts that you need. He will help you to meet the people that you need to meet. He will help you to meet the priests or the people that you meet at the table sharing breakfast and help you to meet the people that are struggling in the same way as you're struggling because no matter what your struggle is whether it's no it doesn't matter whether it's good bad or indifferent a small thing to you might be something astronomical to someone else but people in some make shape or form are always drawn to each other so come to Medjugorje, be open and allow the fruits of Medjugorje to bring you back year in and out to celebrate the Eucharist, celebrate the Rosary, celebrate confession, celebrate adoration and, and be part of Young at heart again, <laughs> like that little guy. He gave it us the lesson. Huh? <laughs> be young at heart. Yes, be enjoy young at heart. Now. Enjoy it. Like kids will be kids, but yeah. look, uh, look, Jesus loved kids. Yes. Unless you be like a child, you don't receive. Him, you don't live you in the know, kingdom. No, no. It's our adult health. Yeah. Again, that makes a mess of ever. If we allow children to be come like a children. Yes. And I say want to want to want to know. I can't say want enough times. Because there's so many different ones. I'd say want five different times. Because that want to want to want to want to know. That want and that not knowing how, not no understanding, not fully understanding anything. But have that want, not even in your heart, but having that want, maybe it's an idea of a want in your heart. That little tiny speck of a mustard seed. You know, again, you know, that little, we only need a tiny, tiny speck to, to, for something great to happen. And like, it does happen. It does happen. It happened in your life, happened in my life. It happened in, in so many deep people's lives and there's so many different people have done so many great things for the Lord. Like, like as I say, I'm coming to Medjugorje for so many years, but like, as you say, I came originally out of Asheri, out of uh, 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 not knowing the Lord. I've done BA in theology, I have a hospital chaplain, and I've recently done the the, the thing for the, the parish and the diocese. And like, and, uh, we had a retreat house for a couple of years before COVID closed it down. All these things came out of the fruits of Medjugorje. You know, all these things came out of the fruits of Medjugorje. Like, and there's no way that when I came here first, that I thought I'd be sitting here in front of you, boasting about the Lord 20 years later, about or 30 years later, about how great Medjugorje is. Because when I came to Medjugorje 30 years ago, I came here as a broken for, person. I came here for a suntan. <laughs> for what? I came here for a suntan <laughs> and, and a couple of beers. And my mother wouldn't be looking at me. <laughs> uh, she's smiling from heaven. She's she smiling. did her job she did. bringing you here. Yeah, but out of chat. And you have a special ministry now you want to share? If people want to contact you, talk to you, can they? Or? Yeah, they can, yeah. yeah? Um, 
ministry that we have is called Leo Steel, which means it, it's Latin for praise goes to God. So Leo, L A U S T E O dot E U. I put it in the description of the video. Yeah. Thank you. Leo Steel, and it's about bringing people to wholeness. It's about meeting people in their needs. Our, 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 um, our ethos is the woman caught in adultery where it doesn't matter what you've done the Lord is there for you make the same experience it doesn't matter where you come from never give up never give up that the Lord is there for you and it doesn't matter where you come from or how you've been that the end of the day the Lord is there for you and he will take out the shards of dirt out of your wound so your wound can heal so you can become whole once more amen so i mean to, uh, what can i say again important at the end don't give up it's a process take accountability what you said too you have to take accountability look at yourself honestly when somebody wrote on facebook catholicism foremost is to be honest to yourself yeah see and i saw i tried everything our yoga buddha everything it doesn't yeah. work i couldn't yeah. save myself i need a savior that's what my journey ended my mother prayed for me like yeah. your mother prayed for you i guess the rosary yeah but you, people can't be honest with themselves they don't know how to do yeah that's the problem yes exactly because that deception of how yeah there is that deception deception of how is the problem people have, are deceived themselves into an understanding where they don't know how yeah but that's that's what i'm trying to say is that that wants that want to want to want to want to know the Lord. I don't know how. How is it humanly possible? I don't know where to begin. I don't know how the concept is. I don't know or understand anything about what I'm supposed to do. Who the heck? What the heck? How am I supposed to come around it? But have that curiosity in your heart and that seed of the mustard seed, that want, that tiny little mustard seed. By the end of the day, you will get that sun over there to dance in the sky yes and that's just, that's how things can grow for you and that's how things can flourish for you and that's how things can become so real for you is that when you sit in the once more in the blessed sacrament that you can unite yourself body mind and spirit with the lord and when pain comes your way and hurt comes your way you will deal with this because you're not dealing with it on your own anymore. You have the Lord working, walking with you. And He is the one that's standing in front of you. He's the one that is taking the brunt of the onslaught. He's the one that is there with you. He And beginning of time, He knows what you've done in the beginning. He knows you from the time you're conceived in your mother's womb. He knows you when you die. He knows you what you're going to be like. So you can't hide from him. He know concept. And of he mind. loves you. Don't. He's not the angry man with no, the old beard who, who wants to pull, put you in hell and be happy. Yeah, I got him. He's the opposite of angry. Opposite. Pure Opp love. He's interested in every aspect opposite of your life, in your yeah, brokenness. Yeah. There he is, yeah, waiting for you. Yeah. yeah. If you, you know, give me an example. Say you freaking stole for argument's sake, and you got. Hands in the till, and your your boss comes up to you and puts your hands on top of you. Say, right, I have you, my son. I knew you're robbing the money. How are you going to feel? Does the boss know the circumstances why you're stealing that money? Does the boss know why you're stealing that money? Does he know that you have bills to pay, or you have an addiction problem, or that you have uh, 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 your kleptomania where you can't help yourself? Jesus does. Jesus knows why you put your hands in the tail. Whether it is just to buy a drink or whether it's to buy fags or buy food for the table or whether it's just the, the devil tempting you to do so, he knows all this. And loving he, way, not judging way. Not loving way and he knows why. And he understands. Which, which understands. He understands. He understands you greater than you understand yourself. And it is our self myself that convinces myself that I'm not either not worthy for the ceiling or I convince myself that I am not able to receive this that I am it's all a lie 
It's all a joke. It's all a lie. The things that wear you down, the voices in your head that pull you down, never from God. God is uplifting, yeah. constructive, yeah. giving peace, yeah. joy in your heart. Yeah. And don't give up. I think oh. that's the message from yeah. Yeah. you Definitely. and me. As I said, when a woman caught in adultery with regards to her, they were judging her. The Pharisees, the, the hierarchical, they brought the lady to Jesus to try fool Jesus, to, to make him to see what he'd say. They were condemning the lady. They were the higher priests. They were the ones that were ready to stone her. And what did Jesus do? Jesus didn't condemn her. Jesus simply wrote in the sand with his finger, condemning those who are condemning her because those in glass houses can't close stones. And there's no, we're all in glass houses, remember that. We all live in a glass house. We all have glass windows. So we could, they can all break at some stage. But, you know, uh, Jesus, that woman who had been caught in adultery, she knew she was caught in adultery. But she looked into, Jesus looked into her eyes and simply said, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. And be assured, if you still sin, just ask him, help me out of the sin. I don't know, sometimes we are caught up and we don't know, like you said. If we have that encounter, we yeah. won't want to sin anymore. Yeah. If we have that encounter where we meet Jesus, if we meet Jesus in that encounter, we don't want to sin anymore. We don't want to come, we don't want to offend him because it becomes a love affair. You it see the goodness, love. the love of him for you. It, it, it's a love affair. How many yeah. times did I send my wife flowers? Yeah. How many times do I sell my, tell my wife I love her? How many times, you know, do I text her and say I love you? What's for dinner? You know, all these things. It's the same with the Lord. It's the same love affair. It's the same with our, our blessed mother. She loves us. My mum loved me. I miss her. Am I, am I sad she's gone? No, because I know where she is. She's with our lady. She's with our Lord. The, you know, she's there. I don't have to grieve for my mum, even though she died in April. I don't need to grieve for my mum because I know exactly where she is. I don't need, and, and I say that with 100% confidence. And maybe people say I'm stupid, but I have the inner confidence and inner knowing that my mum is united in heaven. Amen. That's all our journey. We want to get there. Oh, without a doubt. That's all. The only security we have, yeah. we all will die. Yeah. Because hell isn't a nice place. Yeah. And you want to be in the fullness. But that's what we want to, with this video, with this interview, to get you into the fullness. And it happens step by step. Take your time. Start building. Ask. Even say, I don't know how, like you said. But I started like that too. I asked. How, what, do you love me, God the Father? One time, show me that you love me. Yeah. We all know Jesus, sweet Mary, but God the Father is this distant guy. Yeah. We want to just ask him, I did ask God the Father, do you love me? Show me one time, and he will show it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a spiritual law written in the Bible. The one who is seeking me, he will show himself. Yeah. And you are the proof. Yeah. Thank you for that beautiful interview. Thank you. Yes.